オープンインフラ TV ジャパンへようこそ。司会を務めます。日本オープンスタックユーザー会会長の水野と、えー、クラウドオペレーターデイズ東京実行委員長の長谷川です。今日から始まりましたオープンインフラストラクチャーサミット。初のオンライン開催となりましたが、先ほど初日の基調講演が終わったところです。そちらをダイジェストで紹介します。また、明日の基調講演も少し覗いてみたいと思います。その前に、キーノートは本イベントのプラットフォームを通じて、オンデマンドでいつでも視聴できます。気になる方はぜひそちらもご覧ください。また、イベント開催中は、110カ国のコミュニティメンバーと出会うチャンスです。セッションチャットで対話し、オープンインフラマーケットプレイスにアクセスし、その体験をハッシュタグ、オープンインフラサミットで共有しましょう。今回で21回目を迎えるサミットの基調講演のテーマは、オープンインフラストラクチャーの次の10年です。本サミットはオープンスタックファウンデーションがオープンインフラストラクチャーファウンデーションになるという重大発表で幕開けしました。この意味についてオープンスタックファウンデーションはオープンインフラストラクチャーファウンデーションになることで商用の基盤ソフトウェアをコミュニティベースで構築するための次のステップへ踏み出したということを強調しています。なお、今回の重大発表はオープンインフラ .dev のサイトで確認できますので、詳細をチェックし、グローバルコミュニティにどのように貢献できるのかご確認ください。それでは、マークとジョナサンによる発表を見てみましょう。This is、uh, the 10th anniversary of OpenStack. We just had the 22nd OpenStack release. And this year we've been thinking,、um, you know, really, how did all of this get started? And if we go back to the beginning, how this started Was about an idea. This all started with an idea that there should be open source infrastructure as a service software as we enter this period of time where more than ever we all depend on digital infrastructure for the things that are,、uh, are important in our lives. And that is a thing that I think、um, at the time was a big idea, but we had a very small group that was starting that out. We had about 25 people. Um, that really formed up what,、uh, what, what started back then. And、uh, it was about 20,000 lines of code, so almost no software at all. And over time, we had hundreds of community members who joined in, and then it was thousands and then tens of thousands. And together, what we all did is we added more capabilities into more OpenStack projects. And then across the open source ecosystem, we saw projects like Cloud Foundry that, that、uh, started up. We saw Ceph, Open vSwitch. Now we have Kubernetes. And,、uh, and this whole idea of open source infrastructure has become more relevant than ever today. And what's incredible when you think about what's happening right now, there's just more and more being created. I mean, I would be surprised if this week we see new ideas turn into new communities and start writing new software. And we really believe in creating communities that write software to run in production. And one of the things that we're so excited about. Is some of the new companies that are actually getting involved right now. In fact, just in the past week, our board of directors met and we had four new companies that applied to become platinum members and were accepted to that board meeting for, for next year. And that's never happened before in a single year, let alone in a single board meeting. And that's just incredible. We had companies like Ant Group, who has a, the Alipay platform, which is, we'll be hearing more about later today from one of their engineers. We had Facebook、uh, Connectivity. We had Fiber Home and Wind River. So that really puts us on an amazing course. And these are the companies that believe in this community led, open source community building software、uh, approach. So, like Mark said, now we have,、uh, we have new communities, we have new companies, we have、uh, new technologies. And I think that、uh, this is a really exciting time. And one of the things that we are super happy to be able to announce today. Is that we are announcing the Open Infrastructure Foundation as the successor to the OpenStack Foundation? Cheers! Cheers! Come p i e Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, this, is, this is exciting. This、yeah. is really great news. And it's something that I think、uh, you know, represents where we have gotten to as our community. Yeah. And,、uh, we are Open Infra. <laughs> いかがでしたかコミュニティ主導のソフトウェア開発を中心に据える新たな基盤ソフトウェアの継続的開発と発展を試み
、今まで以上にコミュニティとグローバルな開発集団に重きを置くスタイルで、これからの10年を占う非常に大きな発表でした。一人一人のグローバルコミュニティへの貢献が世界を変えるソフトウェアを作っていく。そんな未来を予感させるものだと私は感じました。Thus, there is a need to rethink the way we build and offer connectivity solutions. As we rethink how networks should be built, we realize that there is significant vision alignment between the OIF and Magma community around connectivity. Connectivity is this phenomenal mandate to take on as a community of people who care about the impact of technology on every human. This is also why I am personally so excited about this collaboration. Over the last year, we have been working with the OIF community in moving Magma from a Facebook incubated project to more of a community led software development project. Without further ado, what is Magma? A good way to think about it is to start by thinking about the problem statement around the network. A network in rural Brazil looks the same as a network in downtown San Francisco, a one size Fits all model. The problem, though, of connecting the next billion users to a higher quality internet is a problem of heterogeneity. Heterogeneity in access technology, Wi Fi, 5G, LTE, depending on how the user is accessing the internet. Heterogeneity in scale is it a two site deployment in the Amazon jungle or a 200 site deployment in a peri urban area? And heterogeneity in a business model. So, a solution that addresses this need. Needs to allow for all access technologies, LTE, Wi Fi, and 5G, support scale out architectures that were popularized by web scale companies for different s i z e of deployments, and allow for customization through permissive licenses and extensible APIs to enable new and novel business cases. Tying all of this together into something concrete, release 1.3 is available now. And supports fixed wireless, carrier Wi Fi, and private LTE use cases. This community has a lot of open source projects. If you have a project, you can use the project to 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 いくつもの困難の末、彼女はコアコントリビューターとなり、広く開発者に手を差し伸べるアウトリーチプログラムでも活躍し、世界中から多くの新しいコントリビューターを連れてくることに成功しました。そんな彼女の旅路を覗いてみましょう。Are you, are you afraid of speaking up because of a language barrier? Please don't worry about that. We are a global community and Because of that,、uh, we know how to make a comfortable environment for you to speak up.、Um, for instance,、uh, you see the picture on the screen. In, this, this picture was from last opening for Summit in Shanghai.、Uh, for that session,、uh, we set up a board in which we started making annotations of the different、uh, changes that we need to do. And if we couldn't communicate things verbally, Uh, we will take those annotations and, and pass them through a software translator and make sure that every single contributor on that room were on the same page. So,、uh, in a virtual environment, that is going to be even easier. But if not,、uh, definitely we have ways for us to make sure that we、uh, communicate dynamically. So, don't worry and speak up.、Uh, and if anything c o m e up that m a k e you feel uncomfortable,、uh, you can reach a lot of people in the community. 続いては、テリー・クラッツさんです。彼はオープンインフラストラクチャーとは何か、クラウドネイティブアプリケーションがプログラマブルな基盤を必要としていること、そしてオープンインフラストラクチャーはそれらに応える手段であることを説明しました。彼は、これらのテクノロジーは互いに競合するコンペティティブなものではなく、補完するコンプリメンタリーであるということを強調しています。それでは、テリーのクリップをご覧ください。20 years ago, you would procure some physical hardware, and as an application deployer, you would install an operating system, your dependencies, 
and your applications directly on top of that. Then we started to add more abstractions, more layers. We added hardware virtualization, abstracting the server you're deploying on from the physical hardware that runs it. Then we added cloud APIs to allow to programmatically access those virtualized resources. So you have programmable infrastructure on one side and cloud native applications being deployed on top of that. More recently, we added a new layer, um, application deployment APIs. That is what Kubernetes provides, higher level primitives to deploy complex applications on top of this programmable infrastructure. So you get the idea here. There is a growing new role of providing infrastructure for application deployers to deploy on. And that is the population that we care about when we talk about open infrastructure, giving that population open source solutions for providing infrastructure. And the solution is not one project hosted by one foundation. You have to mix a lot of ingredients, lots of building blocks, to build a solution that is customized to your needs. To facilitate that, we need to collaborate without boundaries, to integrate various solutions, to test that all things work well together. どちらも先日リリースをやったばかりでオープンスタックは22番目となるビクトリアが先週リリースされ片コンテナーズはバージョン2.0が今月初めにリリースされました。2つのプロジェクトおめでとうございます。オープンスタックは全世界で1500万コ
payment, travel, delivery, games, and so on. These services are built on top of our open infrastructure. This is the number of LINE's open infrastructure. LINE has 180 million monthly active users all over the world. And to accommodate the workload for these users, we have 2,400 hypervisors across four regions, 67,000 virtual machines are running. Separately from virtual machine, we also have 50,000 bare metal servers. We also have 350 Kubernetes clusters and amount of Kubernetes cluster nodes is 54,000 nodes, which run on our open infrastructure and our safe storage is 17 petabytes across three regions. Our open infrastructure is quite huge. So we basically feedback problems and its solutions we hit in large scale deployment. This feedback is varied from code level to knowledge level. And also we started Oslo metrics project in OpenStack Oslo community which is really useful to visualize OpenStack internal workload. Thank you. 初日の基調講演ハイライトは以上になります。この後、約12時間後に放送される2日目のキーノートについて少しだけご覧いただきます。オープンインフラストラクチャ,ラクチャーの次の10年を推進するイノベーションについて議論される予定です。ご期待ください。So why are we using Zoom? Well, one of our developers said this in a really good way. And he believes that premium cars need premium tools and Zoom is a premium tool. And it forces us to have a green master and in that way we uh, increase our development speed. Uh, for example, the one pedal drive of Polestar 2 was built with Zoom. Zoom version three, uh, why do we use that? Well, to handle development in an NVIDIA central computer, where there are many teams with different garrets, and we have the introduction of cloud nodes, we really need Zoom version three. And here we rely on cross-project dependencies, which is the feature of Zoom. And as mentioned many times before, the most important feature of Zoom is the gating system. Do not merge broken code. We believe that if open source pods are going to be successful in the long run, the open source community needs its own cloud. In 2018, we reached out to the OpenStack Foundation to explore our idea, and we thought we were going to piss them off. But Mark and Jonathan said, yes, finally. And together, we launched Open InfoLabs. We got together in real life to talk and plan. We had concrete goals and great clarity on our MVP. And I'm not kidding here. This is a card we wrote that day. It's really hard to argue with avoid doom as an MVP. Our goal is to create a federated large scale cloud starting with academia. A lot has happened in the wonderful world of OpenStack since our last open infrastructure summit a year ago. Two software releases, in fact, the Ushuri and Victoria releases. As Dawson mentioned, Yushuri saw a lot of growth in new areas of technology, particularly around encryption and security. In the most recent release, Victoria, Ironic saw an over 60% increase in activity and landed changes focused on reducing the footprint of its standalone service and supporting more systems at the edge. There was also a focus on hardware enablement and with that came more support and more ways of interacting with FPGAs, which is an area that we expect to continue to grow in the Wallaby release in April. There's always more work to be done and we always welcome more contributors. Asno keynote is in the US on June 21st, at 10 p.m. 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 サミットのすべてのコンテンツはオンデマンドで視聴できます。さらに、オープンインフラマーケットプレイスは終日オープンしてますので、ぜひ一度足を運んでみてください。それでは、では皆様,皆様素晴らしいサミット。
We are Open Infra. 私たちはオープンインフラ。